Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You ready to see your brain? I'm very ready and scared, but I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we can make you feel less scared by the end of this. <laughs> Leah, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I'm thrilled to do it. I am equally the thrilled. The more info, the better. Absolutely. Um, so before we get started, maybe you could share with me some of your goals for this evaluation. You know, what you hope to, to get out of all this. I hope to figure out if I'm on the right medication or not. Mm -hmm. I also like want to know if my brain was impacted by having COVID or by having, I got vaccinated. I got the booster shot while I had COVID. Mm. I'm not sure if that had an effect. Mm -hmm. I also went off my Lexapro and then tried starting it again and it stopped working. Mm. And in between that time, I was having like horrible, like nonstop panic, like just weird body brain stuff that mm -hmm. was not could have been semi-emotional, but it felt really biochemical to me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to learn that the two are very much related. It's almost yeah. an artificial distinction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My anxiety, it, it's weird. It manifests physically. Yeah. And I'm worried about everything. And it's like, that's not even me. Like, I'm worried about everything. I'm worried about not being able to sleep. I'm worried about feeling tired. I'm worried about having another panic attack. I'm worried about oh. everything. It sounds like when your brain stops worrying about one thing, it jumps to another. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like um, I'm picturing like whack-a-mole. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's how it feels. Mm -hmm. okay. Are there ways that you try to exert control over your life these days? I try to like just have a healthy lifestyle, like mm -hmm. working out and like focusing on my sobriety and like attending meetings and right journaling and meditating and things like that. Those are all awesome things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty proactive. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Uh, you said working out. What What is the typical exercise regimen looking like? I actually just started like weightlifting, uh -huh. which is pretty cool. And yeah. then there's card. I do cardio and stuff because okay. I really love that for my brain. Yeah, like, absolutely. I can feel the endorphins like going off. It feels great. Oh my gosh, that's like one of my favorite things to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, cardio especially is yep. just awesome for brain health. Your brain, as you might know, gets the freshest blood in your entire body. Okay. You know, your I didn't heart, know that. yeah, your heart pumps blood to your lungs. Mm -hmm. Your lungs oxygenate that blood, goes back to your heart, and then shoots up into your aorta. First branch goes to your brain, so it's wow. literally the best blood in your body. Oh, so cool. when you're doing cardio, you could visualize yourself really just pumping yeah. up your brain with really, really good activity. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. You're right. You're onto okay, something there. Cool. So you talked some about COVID already. You, 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 you contracted COVID in January? December. December. Okay. Um, and what have you noticed in terms of changes in your thinking, processing speed, focus, things like that since having COVID? It's hard to focus. Okay. Really hard to focus. Um, memory. I mean, literally, like, I cannot remember what I did yesterday. Like, I can right now. But that's because I flew here yesterday. But normally, on an, I have to look at my calendar to remind me what I did the day before. Got it. And that is sounds like a big change for you. That's in, yes. Um, so so then anxiety got a lot worse after you contracted COVID. Yep. How bad did it get? On December 29th, I remember the day. That's I, a sign that it got bad if you yeah, remember the December exact December 29th yeah. is when it all went very downhill. Yeah. Um, I started, that night I didn't sleep. I felt something shift in my brain. I don't know, I can't even explain it to you, but I remember like calling like my kid's father and being like, Rob, like something just shifted in my brain. I'm, I'm mm. like, fuck. And I was in another country. I was in the Dominican Republic with my daughter on vacation. Right. I'm like, what do I do? Mm. And when you say a shift in your brain, like a physical feeling that shifted yeah. or a, uh, a way just, of thinking that no, changed? No, not a way of thinking. It was mm -hmm. like almost like a physical, like I was like, I know I'm not going to sleep tonight. Mm. And then every time I was trying to sleep, when I would like try, start falling asleep, it would, I would be like, <gasps> like I couldn't breathe and I'd wake up. Oh. That was fucking horrible. Like I like that feeling of... Falling almost, or, or feeling more I'm just feeling choking, I'm choking. suffocating. Yeah, got it. That's terrifying. I know. I just, I don't know why this started. I, I just, I mean, things are so much better now, but I'm still not where I want to be. Yeah. Well, you've made a whole lot of progress since then. Yeah, I have. Um, but 
but our job is to help <laughs> push that a little bit further for yeah. you. I think you're anxious to see your scans. Mm -hmm. So what you had done was a SPECT scan. Um, and so SPECT stands for Single Photon Emission mm -hmm. Computed Tomography which is uh, really different than other types of brain scans out there, like MRIs and CAT scans, for example. Okay. MRIs and CAT scans are great for what they do, which is primarily to look at the actual structure of the brain, okay, like the tissue that makes up a brain. Right. Which is super useful when you're looking for structural problems, like a tumor or a stroke or a fracture or things like that, okay? Got it. Uh, what SPECT is good at is showing us functioning in the brain. SPECT is a blood flow study, and blood flow correlates with brain activity. Mm -hmm. If there's a part of the brain that is not super active, it's kind okay. of sleepy, it gets less blood flow. Okay? If there's a part of the brain that is just super hyper, you know, Tasmanian devil, right. uh, it's going to get a lot more blood flow to support its activity. Um, Interesting. So these are what typical uh, images look like. Mm -hmm. Over on the right-hand side, it's labeled uh, surface view. And that is looking at the cortex of the brain, okay? Blood flow along the cortex. The cortex is what you're looking at, okay? okay. The bumpy part of the brain. Mm -hmm. And this tends to be more like your cognitive brain, your thinking brain. It's the most evolved parts of our brains. It's kind of what makes us human. For the active view, uh, and spoiler alert, this is going to be the view that's most interesting in your scans. Mm -hmm. Active view is looking at emotional structures in the brain, okay? deeper structures uh, that tend to be more associated with things like anxiety and depression. Okay? All right, we will start with your surface view. Okay. And here it is. <clears throat> Remember, yes. color doesn't matter. We're okay. looking at shape. Shape looks good, right? Shape looks great. I was so pleasantly surprised to see these images. Oh, good. Um, and this, I would not necessarily have predicted based on the substance abuse history that you shared. That's great. And this probably speaks a lot to all the work that you've been putting in, in yeah. your sobriety, um, but also exercise, nutrition, yeah. and just all of the focus that you've put in on improving your brain health. That's great. Uh, this is a progress report. <laughs> Amazing. Things are moving in a very, I'm very good direction. putting that on my fridge. <laughs> As you should. You should take uh, color photos of yes. it. Yes. Uh, we could probably get you some extra copies. Great. Just put them up in every room. All right. So now we can look at your active scans. Okay. All right. So uh, remember. I see a lot of white. <laughs> what we tend to see is mostly blue, uh, a little bit of red, a little bit of white. Oh and my here's God. your scan. You have a very busy brain. <laughs> Which you already knew. That's like what I try explaining, that it just doesn't stop. Yeah. And um, you can now reference this image as one way of explaining that. There's a lot of background noise. And so as you're going through life, <laughs> this is when you're trying to concentrate. So imagine, you're trying to concentrate, and yet there's just this high level of background noise. It's sort of would be analogous to trying to read a book next to the 405 during rush hour, you know, which you had to drive through earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so your thoughts are having to drive through similar traffic. Um, and it's no wonder that you might feel exhausted <laughs> emotionally, cognitively, physically. Um, and you might also feel really anxious because there's a lot bouncing around. So there are a few key structures here that are lighting up pretty substantially. So that captures most of the increased activity in those four circles I just drew. Recall that in the back here, this is your cerebellum. Mm -hmm. We want that to be okay. red and white. So Got this it. is good. That's supposed to be like yeah. that. So if you connect those four circles, you form a diamond. And you do have a little bit of activity outside of the diamond. We refer to this as a diamond plus pattern. Okay. We tend to see a diamond plus pattern 
in people who have experienced emotional trauma. Now, I don't diagnose that straight by looking at a scan, but the two do tend to go together pretty often. History of emotional trauma and a diamond plus pattern. And certainly some of what you've shared qualifies, <laughs> absolutely. So I would say for your scans, just circling back and putting these back together, your surface scans were a pleasant surprise, okay? Um, there were some areas like we talked about with some evidence of reduced blood flow, possibly related to some inflammation that you've experienced recently and also past toxin exposure uh, in areas that affect your executive functioning, your ability to regulate strong moods when they come up in you. Um, and then deep inside your brain, your brain is very active. I mean, very, very busy, lots going on, lots of strong emotions being generated, which you're gonna have a harder time regulating. Um, and so it's no wonder, you know, that you've had the mood swings you've talked about, that you've had the panic attacks, the irritability, you know, regretting things later after mm -hmm. you act on yeah. an emotion, right? Um, so now we gotta think about what to do about all this. Uh, yeah. Okay? <laughs> which is, the main reason why we do these scans. One is to validate what your experience has been and put pictures to what you've been mm. feeling, right? But the other is to make our task kind of more simple. Because <laughs> uh, right. when we boil it down, we just want to quiet this <laughs> yes. and boost this. <laughs> yep. And if we do that, we're, you're going to notice a lot uh, of, of significant improvement. So how are we going to do that? Um, Couple things. Have you ever done uh, DBT in the past? Dialectical behavioral no. therapy? Okay. So actually, it's a really, really evidence based therapy yeah. approach. Yeah. And um, the whole idea with it is there's a mindfulness component to it, there's an emotion regulation component to it, um, there's a like interpersonal effectiveness component to it. Um, and then also like a distress tolerance piece to it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this, I mean, when you really think about it, is getting at temporal lobe function. Yep. Um, and therapy is powerful. <laughs> I'm a strong yeah. believer. It's not just about meds and supplements. Yeah. Um, no, therapy yeah. changes the brain. And we've, we've got scans to prove that. Wow. So what I would say is... Um, but like, how did my brain get like this? Like, because a year ago it wasn't like that. Or yeah. like a year, you know, two years ago, it wasn't like that. So it's just things that have gone on. Yeah. Like it could be like the stress from the pandemic, my grandmother dying, right? I think you sort of know why your brain's like this. Is that why? <laughs> yeah, It's absolutely. like emotional stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Things that have made you more anxious and depressed are the things that are making your brain look like that. Add on some inflammation from COVID and you've got, that's like lighter fluid. Got it. All right. I think I that's... Feel, I feel better. Good. <laughs> Your body language is very different now than it was yeah. in the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a well, good thing. Um, you know, well, knowledge is power. It is. So now I feel like I have a little power over my brain and what I've been going through. And I also feel validated. Totally. Because I'm like, am I going fucking crazy? <laughs> like, what the hell? And it's like, actually, yeah, you are. Look. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we wouldn't say you're going crazy. We'd say that, uh, or I would say that your brain's been really, really active. Um, and so we're going to help calm that down for you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah.